Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video where today we are here once more with more F1 2022 manager. Yes, if you missed out on the video that went live yesterday from the Canadian Grand Prix, absolute carnage uh, in Montreal is probably the best way we can describe it, but would highly, highly recommend going back and checking that video out. Of course, apologies there was no video the day before. I had actually planned on Canada going out the day before and then this race was going to go out yesterday. And then for some reason, YouTube decided there wasn't going to be any sound on the Canadian Grand Prix. But we return then here at Silverstone, of course, now pretty much at the halfway stage of the campaign. Still things looking pretty good for us at the top of the championship there. Charles Leclerc currently leads the way overall there. 23 points, uh, the gap between him and Carlos Sainz as we head into Silverstone. Constructors-wise, of course, we are comfortably out in front there as well. What's that? 136 points now clear of Red Bull in the Constructors' Championship. In terms of heading into this weekend, though, I don't think we've got too many major things uh, to try and discuss. Of course, we have got only a limited amount of time of aerodynamic testing and things like that. So I think we will probably just sort of use the last of the time to try and get a new, um, new, new rear wing sorted. So we'll max out everything there. And then we will head over and have a look at what else we can do with that. Don't think we really need to emphasize any certain part of the car. I mean, we're looking very, very strong in comparison to most of the other teams in pretty much every aspect at the moment. So you know what? We're going to do that. We've got a few available engineers, so we may as well speed up the process. And yeah, we'll, we'll keep that normal time there. So that should be done in just under a month. So yeah, still trying to keep sort of the upgrades going at the moment. Of course, we have got no design uh, no design facilities available now so that should give us with one less thing to worry about as we head into the next couple of races but of course as always a massive thank you to all of you for the insane and continued support on the channel you know, we're getting very very close now to 82,000 subscribers so if you're not already please do make sure you leave a like and get yourself subscribed of course for daily f1 manager content Dutch Grand Prix this weekend. I'm recording this before anything has happened, of course, uh, from Zandvoort or anything exciting has happened in Zandvoort. But obviously, at the time this video has gone live, hopefully you'll have just seen qualifying. So maybe, maybe let me know down in the comments below who you think is going to take the race victory tomorrow. But yeah, let's get into it then. British Grand Prix time here from Silverstone. Hopefully we can continue on this strong run of form and try and get another win on the board. We're here in legendary Silverstone, where the very first Formula One World Championship Grand Prix was held back in 1950. It's a place where every tuft of grass breathes motorsport, and the crowd are already crackling with excitement. Silverstone demands a lot of power from cars, with numerous twists and historic turns. Downforce is going to be a key factor to manage if teams want to succeed here. The season is about halfway through, and it makes me wonder, what else is in store for the teams? Well, there's only one way to find out. So, without further ado, let's get started. Right, well, here we are then back at Silverstone. And looks like it is going to be sunny skies this weekend. Of course, almost had a bit of a scare last time around uh, in Montreal. But yeah, I mean, at this stage of the year, we pretty much know what we're doing in terms of practice programs. Like, I think, to be honest, I quite preferred, obviously, when we jump into qualifying, just jumping straight into Q3 at the moment. Of course, when we do a proper Road to Glory uh, style series in probably just a couple of weeks now, uh, with how quickly we're smashing through F1 Manager, then I'll probably jump back in. Of course, Q1 and Q2 is going to be a lot more difficult once again. But yeah, of course... Both drivers pretty happy with the car now, of course, 100% setup confidence, everything like that. Silverstone, of course, a very, very high-speed circuit, but you do need a little bit extra on the front end. So we'll try a few things and see what works there. Often we've accidentally kind of nailed Leclerc's strategy uh, very, very early on in the weekend, and then we've kind of left Sainz to struggle a bit more, which has often left him on the back foot. But we'll continue to try different things, and let's get into practice then here in Silverstone. So heading out of the pit lane then here at the gorgeous and so historic Silverstone Grand Prix circuit. Must admit this weekend, of course, probably right up there is one of the races everyone wants to win. You know, it is your this, your Monaco's, your Spa's and your Monza's really are probably the big four, of course, in Formula 1 nowadays that all the drivers desperately, desperately want to win at. But hopefully we can try and get some good data. Of course, like I said, both drivers are very, very confident now in the car. We have had to put fresh ERS packs 
into both of the cars though jumping into this weekend just because they were getting very very worn out there you can see fresh ones of those in both cars i don't think i think pretty much everything else though they are still even on aren't they i think charles leclerc his engine is slightly more worn out than carlos Sainz's, so he is going to be the one that's likely going to take penalties late on in the campaign but yeah at the moment though we're, we're doing pretty well we're monitoring things quite nicely at this stage of the season and we've just got to continue doing what we're doing i think well, Charles Leclerc then very not happy with the car early on in the weekend as we've got a big, big train here. We've got both Mercs. I think that's Bottas and one of the Alpines. Uh, sorry, no, it is one of the Williams, of course, uh, that we're all stuck behind. But Leclerc currently still fastest there ahead of his teammate Carlos Sainz. I'm intrigued to see what Sainz is going to come back reporting, uh, hopefully in just a second. You can see he's got four out of five on his communications. But we are going to peel uh, Charles Leclerc into the pit lane at the end of this lap and Sainz is happy then okay so that's reassuring at least one of the drivers pretty happy uh, with the car setup so we'll leave Sainz out there to finish off his run we'll bring Charles Leclerc back in and try and change up a few things as we get to about the halfway stage of the session now Sainz has been released into some clear air here he's gone very very quickly around this track half a second clear of Charles Leclerc of course perhaps maybe on a bit of a confidence high after his pole position last weekend, of course, the race didn't quite go the way of Carlos Sainz, but it absolutely wasn't his fault, as he's going to peel in then at about the halfway stage. We'll make a few tweaks, see if we can find any more pace there, but the Spaniard already showing very, very good pace this early on. 15 minutes left of the session, and Charles Leclerc is still not confident with this car, so immediately we're going to try and bring him back into the pits once again. I mean, look at that. Everything pretty much apart from traction uh, is meant to be in the green. But still, yeah, not quite happy uh, with where the car is. We're going to try and tweak around some front wing angles slightly. I mean, we're going to have to bring uh, the ARD way, way forward around this track. But yeah, we're just trying things to see what works for Charles Leclerc. But none of it's happening at the moment. He's only going to get time uh, for a very, very short run right towards the end of the session. Even, what, six laps is probably all we're going to be able to do. But Sainz immediately then this weekend, looking far more confident than Charles Leclerc. Could we just be seeing a little bit of a change of form? Sainz now finally getting on even footing, it feels like. Because, again, he's really happy with the car here late on in uh, FP1. Car feels pretty good, according to Carlos Sainz there. Charles Leclerc is definitely on the back foot at the moment. Here we go then, 10 seconds left of on the clock here in free practice. One, well, most cars have peeled back into the pit lane, but Charles Leclerc is still out there trying to get, gather as much data as he possibly can. As he has got within a couple of tenths once more of Carlos Sainz here. So there we go, check the flag is now out. But let's see if Charles Leclerc able to find anything more at the moment. He's not improving on this lap, so we won't get any closer to Carlos Sainz. But could we see Sainz with back-to-back -back pole positions? No, he is going to bail out of it anyway. So Charles Leclerc into the pits then at the end of FP1. Sainz fast, just ahead of Leclerc and Verstappen. And then, yeah, it looks like Mercedes have made a bit of progress forward this weekend. But let's get into qualifying then here from the British Grand Prix. As always, we'll let the team tinker around with what they feel they need to late on in the session. But for us... It's time for Saturday. Imperium experiences are back and better than ever. This time they are offering you the chance to win a weekend of a lifetime at the 2022 season finale in Abu Dhabi. This includes a four-night accommodation at a five-star hotel and travel to and from the circuit included every day. All you need to do is click the link down in my description and enter the competition on their website. But hurry, with only 1,500 tickets available and the competition closing on the 14th of September, you definitely don't want to miss out on this. So click the link down in the description below and a massive thank you to Imperium for sponsoring this video. We return to our highly anticipated race weekend just in time for the start of qualifying. For those teams who made the most of free practice, they'll be heading into qualifying full of confidence, knowing that they can carry today's momentum into the upcoming session. Does practice make perfect? Well, for one standout driver, it will make for pole. You're going to want to join us for this, folks, so fasten your seatbelts. Right, we'll have a look then at FP3 results and still Carlos Sainz fastest there at the moment. Looks like Hamilton and Pierre Gasly might be taking some grid penalties here as well. And we are going to just see more and more of those ramp up as we head towards the second half of the year. But Sainz has clearly got the pace over Charles Leclerc early on in the weekend. Can Leclerc, we've seen it so many times in the past though, make the difference when it comes down to the Q3 runs? 
As Saturdays continue to ramp up then, looks like Charles Leclerc is building up more and more confidence with the car. Fastest in Q2, but only a tenth quicker uh, than the time Carlos Sainz were able to set. So this is still very much wide open as we get into Q3 here from Silverstone. is out of the final corner then, about to start his first lap here of Q3. Charles Leclerc heads down in towards Turn 1. They're completely flat out, of course. Oh, a slight blend of throttle this time round for the Monogas drivers. We'll try and monitor uh, the times they both set through all of the sectors, as always. I can't imagine uh, there is going to be much between them. We've got Sergio Perez a little way up the road, and then a couple of cars just heading out of the pits. But Charles Leclerc, of course, we know. We've seen it so many times this year. They're purple through Sector 1, but no sight. Just go slightly quicker there. How much was the gap? Four one hundredths of a second through the first sector. Of course, it's mainly it's just about trying to get the traction out of the loop. That's the only real time uh, you can lose a lot of pace. But we'll have to wait and see. Of course, we have got that Mercedes just up the road. Of course, like we said, Hamilton and Pierre Gasly are with grid penalties this weekend. So they're going to be starting a bit further down the order. Charles Leclerc is going to be closing in on that Mercedes at not a particularly opportune time of qualifying here. Is it? Doesn't look like they're holding him up too badly. I don't think I've got a tiny bit on the exit there. As Sainz hopefully will be able to squeeze by. So Sainz at the moment has got the upper hand as he gets past him as well. There, We've got another car going very, very slowly there down through sector three. Is that going to ruin our lap times here as well? There is that is one of the... Oh! Excuse the sound effects, but that is appalling driving from Valtteri Bottas there as we head out the final corners. Leclerc only goes P2 there. Sainz, I'm sure. No, he will still go fastest. That's incredible uh, by Carlos Sainz. But Charles Leclerc now, I feel like we say it every race, but all the pressure is on him as we get into the final Q3 runs here. He's currently sat down in P3, seven tenths away from Carlos Sainz there. He didn't really get an opportune lap in himself. Where is Max Verstappen going to be, though? Surely... This could be fastest from the Dutchman. Nope, he's on an outlap, so we won't worry about that at the moment. So here we go then, coming towards the end of Max Verstappen's first lap of anger here. What is he going to be able to do as he heads down through the final couple of corners? Doesn't really want to take the curbs, apparently, through the final couple of turns. But up towards the start-finish line, Verstappen, that is going to be P2. Five thousandths away from Carlos Sainz at the end of the first runs. It does seem like we've got a bit of an advantage down at Ferrari this weekend. Of course, high-speed circuit often has favoured us, I say that, so of low-speed circuits have often favoured us over one lap pace, but yeah, as long as we put it on pole again, that's the most important thing, but yeah, not, uh, not the best laps for either driver on their first runs. Well, 30 seconds left on the clock, and once more, we are going to try and be the last cars out on a run here, so we'll get to see all the times posted up by everyone else. Sainz is going to be cutting it quite fine there as we head out through the final corners, but Charles Leclerc romps back down through turn one and turn two. Sainz surely should have enough though just to make sure that he gets out onto his final run. Yes he will with about 10 seconds left on the clock but Charles Leclerc like we said is the one with all the pressure on his shoulders there. Currently down in P4 at this stage of qualifying. He needs to try and get a good lap in here. I'm going to have to wait and see what the young Monogast driver can do. Of course, took yet another race victory last weekend. There is, he does improve in Sector 1. He gets very, very close to the time set by Carlos Sainz there. But will Sainz continue to improve as well as he heads down the Wellington Strait? No, he will not. So Sainz and Leclerc, two thousandths of a second between them at the end of Sector 1. Of course, that was the gap that separated them last weekend in Canada. Bottas only goes up to P6 there at the end of his qualifying run. I'm sure he's a little bit gutted to be behind Fernando Alonso. We've got both Mercedes as well on at laps at the moment. Could they try and get themselves up into fifth and sixth place here? So far, so good from Charles Leclerc. Is he going to be able to improve through sector two? Yes, he is. He's up in the green at the moment. Charles Leclerc is improving as these laps unfold. But of course, the other question is, will Sainz try and make it two pole positions in a row? Has Charles Leclerc got clear track down in towards the final couple of corners. Perez improves only a tenth away from the time set by the Spaniard. Will Max Verstappen improve as well as we head through the final couple of corners? Hamilton goes quicker than Charles Leclerc. Verstappen takes pole. Can Leclerc do even better? Yes, he can. Down into the 126s, but Sainz isn't improving at the moment, and this could be pole position for Charles Leclerc at the British Grand Prix. They're out of the final corner for Carlos Sainz. He does improve to a 26.8. It's a 26.9, sorry. And he's 11 thousandths away there at the end of qualifying. But it is both Ferraris, both Mercedes, both, uh, sorry, uh, both Ferraris, both Red Bulls, 
both Mercedes there at the end of qualifying. But Carlos Sainz really did turn it up right when it mattered. But it wasn't quite enough this weekend. It is Charles Leclerc on pole for the ninth time in 10 Grand Prix here. It has been such a dominant display from him over one lap this season there. But Hamilton and Gasly, like we said, starting out of position. So Fernando Alonso is probably sensing a good, uh, good haul of points here down at Alpine. But let's get into it then. British Grand Prix time from Silverstone. Hopefully once more, we can try and get another win. This channel is proudly sponsored by Bybit, the official crypto partner of Red Bull's Formula One team. I've been using their platform for my personal crypto savings over the last few months, and when they got in touch to support the channel, I was super, super excited. Currently, they're offering you guys a special new promo for the first 100 of you to deposit $10 or more onto the platform. You'll get another $10 free. Also, five lucky winners will get their initial deposit doubled up to $1,000. That means if you deposited $1,000 onto the platform using my codes below, you could be within a chance to get another $1,000 completely free. We've seen the landscape around crypto drastically change over the last couple of years and I genuinely believe it holds an important place in our future. However, please be careful as always when trading as you are liable uh, to lose money. But if you're interested and you're 18 or older, click the link down below to get started and see why Red Bull and myself as well as thousands of others trust Bybit as their crypto. Race day has arrived and the time has come for these drivers to fight it out wheel to wheel. Ferrari performed brilliantly during qualifying and will be very pleased with their grid positions. But the challenge for them will be to keep the momentum going during the race. This weekend, Red Bull displayed real promise during qualifying, but will they fulfill that potential by the time they reach the checkered flag? And the race will be taking place under blue skies. That means the team should be able to apply their strategies without any added complications. This is sure to be quite the spectacle then. And we've got a front row seat for today's race here at Silverstone. Right, well, here we are then looking towards the British Grand Prix once more. And in terms of strategy today, both look like the medium tyres could go very, very far into the race is it worth though could soft mediums be doable here certainly seems like it could be possible there we'll try and take those soft tires to about lap 23 then and yeah that does reckon it could be a much much quicker strategy in this grand prix so that's what we're going to try and do with Charles Leclerc. we'll probably give carlos Sainz the same opportunity but i might go alternate for the Spaniard. No, I think we will stick to that in terms of strategy. Then let's just set it up as well for Carlos Sainz. There, we'll have to make him just go ever so slightly longer uh, in this race. They're 24 laps and then go to the end on the mediums. But yeah, they might have to nurse the tyres a little bit. Of course, we have had such a strong advantage over Red Bull this year that even if they did have to two-stop late on in the day, it might not be the end of the world there. But yeah, let's get into it then. British Grand Prix time here from Silverstone. I'm really hoping, of course, we can try and take another win on the board there as we're going to brim the cars with fuel as well. No need to worry about that all too much. And let's get into it then here, ready at Silverstone. It's sunny and bright as the drivers line up on the grid. And there's Charles Leclerc. They're in P1. Let's see if they can take advantage of that position. And further back, there's Sainz. After an impressive qualifying performance, they're starting today just behind pole. The teams are ready to go. Anticipation is high, and the drivers are ready for this. The British Grand Prix. And it's lights out, and away we go. Well, there we go then. Uh, lights out and away we go here at Silverstone. And it looks like Verstappen has actually got a good start there. Around the outside of Carlos Sainz down through turn one and turn two. There's Sainz again under pressure off the start of these races as Verstappen actually starting on the medium tyres there. That is a very, very interesting call from Red Bull. But Sainz not going to give out on this one all too early on in the race. And I think this is the golden opportunity just to let Charles Leclerc try and push early on as Sainz has to slot back down into P3. That loses a big, big gap to uh, the top two there, as you can already see under pressure from George Russell as we head down the back straight. But Charles Leclerc, dream start for him there. He's going to be comfortably ahead 
of Max Verstappen and Carlos Sainz. Sainz so here yeah, really, really struggling actually off the start here. Has he got a puncture? No, he don't think he does off the corner there. I did just think for a moment the way the car wobbled around that he might have had a puncture, but it seems like he has been able to get away with it. But yeah, it's Carlos Sainz there. Really, really just nowhere in comparison to those top two off the start of this race as we will get Charles Leclerc just to calm it back down there. He should be able to build up and get outside the DRS window by the end of lap two there if he's already eight tenths clear of Max Verstappen. Let's just have a look quickly at Charles Leclerc. Once again, you know, he's, he's certainly led from pole quite often so far this year. Sergio Perez had a bit of a stinker there down into P6 at the start of the race. But like we said, Alonso and George Russell, they're sensing quite a good opportunity uh, with Hamilton and Gasly further down the order there. Of course, out of place, out of position. But can we just ride on board then through the final couple of turns of lap one? Yes, we see Charles Leclerc there. Is the gap going to be up to one second? Yes, it is. As already, though, sight 1.2 seconds back behind Max Verstappen there, as we'll see all the lap times come in at the end of the first lap. That big, big gap forming uh, behind Perez and Bottas there, and you can just see a huge, huge gaggle of cars there. A bit of a gap between Gasly and Ricardo, and then you've got the last of the runners. But yeah, perfect start then. You can see we are the only team, though, that started on the soft compounded tyres, so maybe we are going to have to bring out a little bit of a different strategy call there. Let's just, just monitor the gaps uh, between Sainz and Verstappen. They are going the right way again. He should be back within the one second zone before the DRS is activated. But yeah, maybe, just maybe, soft mediums is a brave, brave call here at Silver. So we'll have to wait and see as to how this one pans out. But Charles Leclerc, perfect start. Carlos Sainz could have, could have had a bit more out of him, but there's still 51 laps of racing here at Silverstone. A lot will happen in that time. So there we go, DRS enabled as we start lap three. Let's just get Carlos Sainz just to try and push a little bit harder here, see if we can get him back past Max Verstappen in this Grand Prix. Of course, the Dutchman, yeah, really is only, is ed, sorry, ever only the only driver uh, that can try and apply pressure to these Ferraris early on in the season. But with DRS, surely Carlos Sainz there, despite the fact he's quite a long way back, he's still going to get a big, big run on Max Verstappen as we head down the Wellington straight here on just lap three of this Grand Prix there. And Carlos Sainz storms to the inside of Max Verstappen. Of course, he has got softer rubber than the Dutchman. But of course, Max Verstappen never going to make it easy for anyone when he doesn't have to there. Carlos Sainz around the outside. Could we see a repeat of 2021? No, we will not. Uh, Verstappen accepts this is probably a battle not worth getting involved in there. And Sainz now will re-inherit re P2 of the Grand Prix. Gap just still floating at over a second between our two cars. But as always, we're going to sit back. We're going to let the race, if Sainz can close in that gap to Charles Leclerc, that'll be very, very impressive to see there. You know, the Spaniard was looking quick in practice. Maybe it was a case of Charles Leclerc had just a bit more one lap pace. And for, uh, sorry, then Sainz perhaps has got slightly better race trim. But we're just getting to save a little bit of battery as well there, as he has already brought out a one-second gap over Verstappen. Perez now back up into P4 of the Grand Prix, as he gets around George Russell here. He's got Fernando Alonso still waiting in the wings. But yeah, just needed Sainz to save a little bit of battery, and we'll get them both just to sort of settle in and see what goes on here. Any other battles? Okay. Hamilton side-by-side side with Lando Norris, two Brits going side by side through the final couple of corners there. Hamilton on mediums, Lando Norris on the hearts. And I think we will see Lando hang on to that position for now. There is, he's got both Alpha Towers just behind him. Maybe they're all going to try and work together this weekend to move up the order. But yeah, Hamilton will stay P12 for now. Don't think we've got any other big, big battles going on. Kevin Magnussen doing very, very well, actually, in his Haas car. They're over to P7 early on in the race. Are we going to see Bottas now try and get a run on the Haas? Ferrari power versus Ferrari power. Uh, Kevin Magnussen, of course, always going to try and defend his positions there as here comes Ocon around the outside of Bottas as we head down through the middle sector once more. It's always good battles going on down in the midfield, apparently, on F1 manager, but Ocon can't quite put the power down on the exit. He might be under pressure from Zhou Guan Yu just a little bit further behind. Of course, Zhou Guan Yu lived in the UK for many, many years now, but first time racing at Silverstone in a Formula 1 car and he'll just slot back in for now here is plenty of things unfolding early on in this race Ricardo all over the back of Mick Schumacher as Vettel and Lance Stroll of course yeah they and Williams really just have not made any progress early on this year but yeah the front though gap still staying pretty level there 1.3 between Sainz and Leclerc as we start lap 5 here we go. Hamilton just pulled off a move, I think, on Lando Norris. Oh, he's still side by side with him. No, Norris has gone way down the order. So what's happened to Lando Norris there? They must have been a bit caught out 
behind Lewis Hamilton, but just trying to watch some of these battles unfold. And Lando Norris has certainly been the big loser in that situation. I'm sure he'd love to score McLaren some more points this weekend, but starting on those harder tyres has certainly made things a bit more difficult for him. He's just got to try and hang on inside the DRS. As about to start lap 10 then of this race, and just been monitoring the gap between Sainz and Leclerc at the front. It does look... Like, Sainz has got slightly more race pace then, so maybe what I said was true. Perhaps Charles Leclerc had set his car up a bit more for one-lap runs here, but Carlos Sainz has got a slightly quicker race package. You can see, yeah, it has been dropped down about a tenth a lap over the last few laps, so it will only be a matter of time before Carlos Sainz gets the DRS off his teammate. Both of them using a little bit more fuel uh, than I'd like to see early on here, but I'm sure we can try and save that later on in the afternoon but let's just wait and see then will Carlos Sainz be able to get into the DRS and surely when he does there's going to be a battle on our hands again you keep wanting me to be hands off with these things so I'm going to watch and see how this unfolds but as long as I don't know what Red Bull did last weekend we should be okay oh Albon down at turn six Here's then the has replay. made a mistake now how on earth he managed that Here's one under pressure from both of the Aston Martins and oh we've got very very lucky that Stroll didn't take him out in the process but now Carlos Sainz as soon as he got within the DRS range of Charles Leclerc has immediately got a whole lot closer here and could this be a good opportunity actually for Sainz just to save a little bit of fuel as we're right on board with the Spaniard here Charles Leclerc had a dream start here but has not been able to get away from his teammate they're showering Carlos Sainz with some sparks that are out of the first couple of turns but as we head out onto the back straight once more look at how overpowered the DRS is on F1 manager Carlos Sainz from half a second away down the outside of his teammate Charles Leclerc there and this is going to be a power move by Carlos Sainz that if he can pull it off he'll have the inside as they head down through Luffield and that will promote him into the lead of the British Grand Prix there fantastic driving from Carlos Sainz but surely this one is just going to start going backwards and forwards between Charles Leclerc and the Spaniard here as long as Max Verstappen doesn't allow himself to get a whole lot closer as in terms of tyre wear I'm not convinced actually that these car cars are going to be able to go as far into the Grand Prix as I had originally planned there so we might try some alternate strategies in this one as we've got yellow flags out Lance Stroll locked up down at turn two you know what I don't think I'm too worried about what's gone on there as we are far more worried about what's going on between Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz there Leclerc just agrees to hang back for now I might have to tell him at some point if Verstappen starts taking good chunks of time out of him I might have to tell him whoever's in second just to sit back here but we'll let him battle for a couple of laps at least battle I'm sure they will as we head back out onto the Wellington straight once more here goes Charles Leclerc around the outside of Carlos Sainz can he repeat the move that his teammate pulled off on him just one lap ago clean around the outside before they even get through turn five there so fantastic job done by Charles Leclerc back into the lead of the Grand Prix but I'm sure Sainz is not going to like that luckily the gap to Verstappen though is still going up but we could be in for another Ferrari war here as look at that down in the midfield here. We've got cars absolutely everywhere. Bottas having a look up the inside of Esteban Ocon. Now we've got Hamilton out of nowhere around the outside of Esteban. How on earth has Hamilton suddenly moved himself up into P8 of the Grand Prix there? That is brilliant driving from the Mercedes man. And yes, he has pulled off the move. We've got Ocon. We've got both Haskars, I think, involved in this one. Zhou Guan Yu as well still waiting in the wings. It is all kicking off here at Silverstone in the midfield. As Zhou Guan Yu, though, I just noticed a little bit offline battling with Yuki Sonoda but Norris and Gasly still waiting in this little group and this really works out well for the hard compound runners so your Norris's and your Ocons are going to be looking at this whole battle pack and be thinking you know what we've got a good chance here to obviously be much much quicker than these cars later on in the day they are wasting their tyres as Leclerc still ahead of Carlos Sainz as we head back down towards turn one let's just ride on board with Charles Leclerc there have a look over the rear wing and see once more whether Sainz can get the run down the back straight there. Is this actually helping both of them save quite a bit of fuel there? As George Russell and Fernando Alonso have just disputed P5 there. And it looks like Alonso has been the winner of that one just now. But Sainz within half a second of Charles Leclerc once more. Surely, once again, this is going to be a done deal as we head down the Wellington straight. No, it is not. Sainz opts to sit back for now. And as we get to one quarter distance, then Charles Leclerc still will lead this race. As fast forwarding on just a little bit further then in this Grand Prix, lap 17 now. I am starting to get a little bit worried about the tyres on both these cars. Science has taken slightly more out of them. Of course, sat in the dirty air a bit more this afternoon, but they're already down to 40%. Now, I don't... Do I give them different strategies and just sort of see who comes out on top here? I'm tempted, honestly, to box Science onto hards 
and then let the colour do medium softs, or do I just let them both go on to a set of mediums and see how far they can take them throughout the second half of the afternoon here? I'm really not too sure what is the best path, of course, at the moment, as Max Verstappen's still sat in P3. Gap isn't coming down to the Dutchman just yet, but I'm sure we're going to see a bit of a crossover period arriving soon, as Hamilton now is suddenly down into, by, what, P16 of the Grand Prix. Max Verstappen's already in, though, on his medium tyres there, so that's very, very early on in the afternoon, but clearly he thinks he's found some clear track space, as a uh, sorry, George Russell even will pit ahead of Alonso. But yeah, Vax Verstappen then going on to hard, so maybe he wants to try and get himself to the checkered flag there. That is very, very long to go, though, on a single stint. You know what we're going to do? Carlos Sainz suddenly back into the lead of this race. I must have completely missed that one, but surely Charles Leclerc is going to try and get back up the inside of his teammate. No, he is not down the back straight, so we're going to get Sainz in at the end of this lap there. We're going to put Sainz onto that set of the medium compound of tyres. Just make sure that definitely says 100 I did actually check back at Canada last weekend, and they were a set of tyres with 100% wear on them. So I've got, uh, sorry, 100% condition on them even, I should say. So there was no reason for the team to allow us to go onto a completely destroyed set, but they absolutely did do it. So Sainz is now going to try and box at the end of this one. We're going to tell Leclerc just to sit back off him for a second, and then we'll tell Leclerc just to conserve his tyres slightly. We're going to give him some slightly different strategies and see which one it favours. But at the moment, I've got no idea which one it's going to work for. So there we go. Then Sainz with a pretty tidy 2.4 second stop there as we've got Haas just waiting and down in the pit lane. Now. Sergio Perez is into the pits. Hopefully, oh, he's just going to come out a little way uh, behind Fernando Alonso. But it can't be long before the Spaniard is into the box either. But yeah, now we're going to try and see how far he can go on these medium tyres. Charles Leclerc are probably going to box onto hards in just a couple of laps to make sure he's definitely on the one stop. But it is quite difficult to try and balance everything out at the moment. We just don't... It's that horrible thing of I don't want to try and screw one driver to save the other. But I also want to cover off, you know, the likes of your Red Bulls here to make sure they don't suddenly jump both of our cars. Right, so Charles Leclerc then, end of lap 20, is going to be boxing onto a set of the hard compounded tyres there as Mick Schumacher ran wide down at turn 14. Let's quickly have a look as to what happened to Mick. Oh, very, very optimistic there. That is not great racing. That is my line through the final few corners down at Silverstone, but... I, I do love those on F1 Manager. They are probably my favourite thing about this game. But anyway, Carlos, uh, sorry, Charles Leclerc into the pits at the end of lap 21. Are we going to see Fernando Alonso leading a Formula 1 Grand Prix here? I don't think if he is, it's not going to be for very long. As Carlos Sainz all over the back of his fellow Spaniard here. But Charles Leclerc, I'm intrigued to see where he's going to come out in comparison to both of these cars. Of course, yeah, Charles definitely going to be able to make it to the end of the Grand Prix on that set of tyres. Not 100% sure just yet as to whether Sainz is going to be able to here, as here comes Carlos Sainz around the outside of Charles Leclerc. So Leclerc has certainly lost out a bit from that, and now we can tell Sainz that he has got a push on this set of tyres here. Let's see him try and get the run past Fernando Alonso. Surely this one is just going to be a pretty easy done deal almost immediately here, as activates the DRS comes Carlos Sainz to the inside. Surely will also come Carlos Sainz there, is he going to be on the move of work? How is he not? Able to get past the Alpine down there. We're going to tell him just to go full deploy mode instead. There is up the inside. Now here comes Carlos Sainz. This is what we want to see. Alonso don't often see him leave the door wide open. But Carlos Sainz then will inherit the lead once more of the Grand Prix. So Alonso won't even get a lap classified as leading there, of course. Because you've got to do it over the start-finish line. And now Sainz has got to try and pull away from the Alpine there. I mean, he's on old, worn tyres. And now, yeah, this is shaping up quite nicely for Sainz. But he is going to have to push like crazy here. And if we box him back over onto a set of softs, it's probably going to be with about 15, 16 laps to go. So he is definitely going to have to try and utilise everything that these mediums have got. Here we go then. Charles Leclerc now all over the back of Fernando Alonso. We've got yellow flags out for someone a bit further down the order. Again, I don't think we're going to worry too much about who that is. As it is, again, Lance Stroll again down at turn two. Again, I'm not too interested in what is going on there. We have got another car, though, that is sat in the way. And this could work out really nicely for Charles Leclerc. There is Alonso just gets a little bit caught out behind them. We just need to tell Charles to go on the overtake mode. We might actually tell him just to go full deploy here. Try and maybe have a look round Fernando Alonso. Can he muscle his way to the inside? Yes, he can. 
So twice in this race then, Fernando Alonso has given up the places to the Ferraris there in a very, very weird and un-Fernando-like way. But Charles Leclerc has definitely lost out quite a bit because of this. Five seconds now behind Carlos Sainz. Of course, he's going to have to try and nurse these tyres to the checker, or not quite nurse them, but just look after them to the checkered flag. Sykes is going all out on those mediums to then box again later on and go back onto a fresh set of softs. So it could be a late race hunt between our two drivers there. But Charles Leclerc has also got plenty of spare fuel. They've got exactly the same amount of spare fuel, but Sykes apparently has only got four laps less extra. Uh, someone please explain that to me down in the comments. My, my little brain can't cope with that. Just crossing over the halfway stage of this race. Like I said, I do want to give Carlos Sainz a fair shot here at the race victory. And the gap is opening up. Seven and a half seconds now clear of Charles Leclerc. So let's just wait and see where he is with about sort of 16, 17 laps to go. About 35 roughly is what I'm thinking we're going to bring Sainz back in. And then he's going to have 17 laps just to really go all out and try and close back up to his teammate. So here we go then. Lap 34 of this race. 18 more to go here at Silverstone and Carlos Sainz has done a very very good job so far on these mediums again obviously we've told him just to go full out attack mode on them Charles Leclerc we have told him he can just up the pace slightly on those sets of hards but I think we are now gonna have to just sort of tone it back in over the next few laps here but yeah Sainz I might box him then at the end of this lap I mean he should come out comfortably in at P3 though I'm just a little bit worried about that Aston Martin and the Williams so I guess that's Latifi and Sebastian Vettel duking out for a mighty P18 here at Silverstone. But yeah, let's sell Sainz then uh, to box at the end of this lap back on to an almost fresh set. That's definitely 91% on those tyres. Definitely says 91%. In fact, no, we'll, we'll make him stay out just a little bit longer. Because that, of course, means he can really push on that rubber. But yeah, if he's sort of got that gap up to 13, 14 seconds, this could be all to play for later on in the day. And, yeah, I, I'm, I'm intrigued, honestly, at the time. At this very moment, I'm just thinking, how are you going to respond to this in the comments below? Do you think I'm favouring Carlos Sainz here? Do you think I'm favouring Charles Leclerc? Or do you just want me to put him on the same strategy every week and maybe, maybe just make it a little more boring? As Thanks for that, Haskar. Nick Schumacher, learn to drive. There we go, then. Lap 36 tyres now, just under 50% life left in them. So we are now... Going to tell Sainz to box at the end of this lap, but he has done a brilliant job to build up the gap over his teammate Charles Leclerc here. So this could really still go either way in the latter stages here in Silverstone. Again, we're just going to allow Leclerc to go a little bit more aggressive. I mean, they've both got pretty similar battery levels in this race, but here comes Carlos Sainz then in for a second stop of the Grand Prix. Like we said, he has built up a decent gap over these last few, and of course he should still be able to push quite hard on that set of the soft tyres to see him through to the chequered flag. Silverson, of course, got a very, very slow pit lane, though. So I've got to be a little bit careful of that as we head down into the box. Nice, tidy stop from the team. This could make all the difference. Two and a half seconds there as here comes Charles Leclerc out of the final corner. And it is going to be still fairly nip and tuck between them. Leclerc will inherit the lead of the Grand Prix. But what is the gap going to be as Carlos Sainz comes back out of the pit lane here? The gap is going to be... Is all Verstappen in again? Okay, so I didn't realise we were accidentally copying his strategy. Luckily, the team had put him on the right set of tyres there. And the gap between Sainz and Leclerc now, about seven seconds here. Fifteen laps, half a second a lap there as both drivers just a little bit worried about the temperature. We're going to leave them both on pushing. We're just going to make sure Leclerc is just certainly not on don't fight teammate anymore. We, we are not going to bring team orders into this. But yeah, now we've got 15 laps to go. Let's see how much time Carlos Sainz can take out of his teammate. Right, well, 10 laps to go then here at Silverstone. That gap is coming down just a little bit more than Carlos Sainz absolutely needs it to at a bare minimum. This could still come down to the final few laps of the race there. We can see Sainz has still taken quite a bit out of those soft compound tyres over these last few laps. You can just see him appearing into shot more and more lay on in the day but 10 to go here from Silverstone as one of the Alpha Towers there jumps out of the way for Charles Leclerc let's just monitor the gap there you can see everyone now outside of the top 10 has been lapped in this race and Verstappen 50 seconds away with just a handful of laps to go here Fernando Alonso still in P4 this has been a brilliant strategy call by Alpine up to now but surely surely Sergio Perez is going to get the jump on him as Hamilton ha and Gasly have both recovered into the point so far today. That is very, very good showing by them. 
Oh, oh, have we got a, oh, we got a virtual safety car here with just a handful of laps to go of the Grand Prix. I think Daniel Ricciardo Perez has actually collided with someone. Car. Definitely not worth boxing either car at this stage and of the day. Let's just make sure they both just save their tyres quickly and we'll get them both to save ERS and we'll go fuel on both cars there. Let's have a look then what happened in this Grand Prix. Sergio Perez, did he collide with... I, I don't know what he's collided with. We're just looking at Williams. Perez has looped it round by himself. Oh, no! I mean, that's Latifi in a nutshell and Perez and Latifi have both lost half their wing. Not really sure what Perez could have done there, though, as Latifi did kind of just crash into him. I mean, late on in the day, there's not what Perez would have wanted, and he's got to do a whole lap without half the wing. But, yeah, Latifi, I think surely questions have got to be raised there. Most notably, does he actually have eyes? But, yeah, that's given Charles Leclerc a little bit of a helping hand, because, of course, it does mean that there's a bit of time when Sainz can't close the gap on his teammate, but Alonso now could be on for yet another P4 in this championship there. Going ahead of the Red Bulls would be a fantastic result as Hamilton now might be able to get the jump on Sergio Perez in the champion... Well, further extend the gap, sorry, between them in the championship. Right, VSC coming to an end then with just a handful of laps to go here. So again, we're going to get both drivers back into push modes. And let's just see what they can do then. We've got less than, what, five... Well, four laps to go here at Silverson. The gap is coming down still. You can see it's down to, what, 2.4 seconds there. As I think that virtual safety car deactivation might have just helped Sainz a little bit more than Charles Leclerc. 2.2 seconds the gap. Four laps to go here at Silverstone. This could still really go either way. It might be a question of who has the DRS on the final lap against each other. But can Sainz get close enough? Or will Leclerc hang on for a late race victory that could have major championship implications? Here we go then, three more to go. You can just see Carlos Sainz getting closer and closer still. The gap now 1.2 seconds between the Spaniard and his Ferrari teammate just in front of him. But you can see now Sainz has pretty much got as much percentage left on those softs as Leclerc has on those hard tyres there. They're both still attacking as Leclerc here, I think, was behind another car. Not quite close enough, though, to get DRS this time. And it's just little things like this late on in the day that Charles Leclerc does not want there. He's got the Alpine of Esteban Ocon just in his way as Perez has had to drop back down. Oh, that's not what you want. It looks like he has lost like, a big, big gaggle of time there, but Sainz has lost even more. Carlos Sainz now loses a bag of time to his teammate Charles Leclerc. Immediately, the gap opens up to two seconds. And could that be it for Carlos Sainz in his quest for the race victory here at Silverstone? Could it be Esteban Ocon there that completely ruins his chance? Well, here we go then, about to start the final lap of the British Grand Prix, and the gap between them is still coming down there. Sainz now less than 1.1 seconds away from his teammate Charles Leclerc, and if he gets the DRS through the first sector there, this could still be on, heading down the hangar straight on the final lap of this Grand Prix there. Sainz not happy with the way Esteban Ocon held him up, but we might still have to navigate Sergio Perez here on this final lap, as will Sainz get the DRS off his teammate? I don't think he has just yet. Charles Leclerc might just only just be able to hang on to the race victory here at Silverstone. We've already had close late race battles between our two drivers already this season. Of course, Miami probably being the best example of that, but Sainz has now got himself within the one second zone of his teammate there. They've both got very little tyre life left, but Sainz, of course, still has the advantage on that softer rubber there. Very little fuel, very little battery for either of them, but I just can't see a way, unless Leclerc suddenly gets held up, that Sainz can get close enough here on the final lap of the British Grand Prix here. It has been a valiant effort there, and the virtual safety car and Esteban Ocon certainly have not played into Sainz's hand, but he will get the DRS down the back straight. How much is he going to be able to close on Charles Leclerc here? He's almost a second back still, but look at the top end speed with the DRS there, getting much, much closer to Charles Leclerc. It is once more going to be an incredibly close finish between the two Ferrari cars, but this time around here at Silverstone, Charles Leclerc is going to make it back-to-back -back race victories once more. Leclerc will win the British Grand Prix, but Sainz certainly gave him a fantastic run for his money. And ticket flag. Well, this was incredibly difficult. Let's take a closer look. Charles Leclerc there taking home the win. Just amazing. 
I think that's a race that people will be talking about for years to come. Well, this was definitely Charles Leclerc's weekend. This is a tremendous podium result. It's joy all around for the team. And the Monegasque driver certainly proved his worth with a terrific drive today. Today's competitors gave it their all, but it's going to be those three taking home the big points. I don't think Ferrari will be too disappointed with that result. They do say success breeds success, and I'm sure the team will be hoping that holds true. After an intense weekend, the team ends in first place in the constructor standings. Next time, the teams will be forging ahead at full throttle through the Styrian forest. The Austrian Grand Prix is right around the corner. Well, there we are then, the end of the British Grand Prix and three tenths of a second come the chequered flag there. Not even my closest finish we've had so far on F1 Manager. But Charles Leclerc walks away with the race of victory there. Carlos Sainz, though, with the fastest lap bonus point, only loses six points there and the gap's still opening up at the top of the championship. Alonso, a fantastic race for him to finish P4 ahead of George Russell and at Valtteri Bottas. Gasly gained 10 places throughout that Grand Prix there. Very, very good race by him. And Hamilton on a bit of a botched two-stop strategy there, only able to recover up to eighth ahead of Perez, of course, with that late race incident and Esteban Ocon there. Sonoda unlucky to not score points this weekend. They're just outside. And then you can see, yeah, no other major shocks. I guess Kevin Magnussen was doing quite well early on and then had some issues late on in the race 29 points though the gap opens up at the top of the championship once more there as you can see george russell re-jumps valtteri bottas there in their weird little battle uh, for lewis hamilton's recent f1 teammates uh joe guan yu re-jumps lando norris as well 11 points for them all tied with kevin magnuson and sonoda yeah with that 11th place re-jumps sebastian vettel for best of the no point squad and then constructors wise of course the gap opens up once more 163 points now as we leave Silverstone there, almost a four race victory margin over Red Bull at this stage of the campaign. But thank you all so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed, please do make sure you leave a like, get yourself subscribed as well. And we will return very, very soon with more F1 Manager. We'll be back tomorrow before the Dutch Grand Prix, ready for the Austrian GP. You guys do not want to miss that. None of these videos would be possible without the help of our channel members. So a massive thank you to all of the names you see on your screens currently for helping support the channel. You can join them by clicking the join button down below. And yeah, thank you once again to everyone that continues all the insane support on my work.